Welcome to our online worship for Palm Sunday. My name is Jo White. We gather on the land of the Bunurong people. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. Jesus has arrived in Jerusalem with shouts of Hosanna and waving of palm branches. As part of our worship, you will hear the Passion narrative. We do this on Palm Sunday to prepare ourselves for the drama of Holy Week with its solemnity and prayer. On Thursday, we remember that Jesus washed the disciples' feet and commanded them to love one another as I have loved you. Then on Good Friday, the church gathers to hear the story of Jesus' passion and crucifixion yet again. On Saturday, we meet together around a new fire to prepare for Easter dawn. And then next week, we will celebrate the resurrection with loud hosannas. But we must, move, must not move too quickly through this holy week. For now, we enter into Palm Sunday and all that that celebration has in store for us. The Lord be with you and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, what are you doing? So just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the 12. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Collect for Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son to take our nature and to suffer death upon the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The Passion Narrative According to the Gospel of Mark The Plot to Kill Jesus It was two days before the Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, 
Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body before its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. The Betrayal of Jesus Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. When they heard it, they were greatly, greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. The Passover with the disciples. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house. The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him one after another, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. The Institution of the Lord's Supper while they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Peter's denial foretold. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee, Peter said to him, Even though all become deserters, I will not. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, Even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I'm deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and keep awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. 
He came and found them sleeping and he said to Simon, Why are you sleeping? Could you not stay awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. The betrayal and arrest of Jesus. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. Jesus before the council. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for a testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made of hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What, what is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving of death. Some began to spit on him to blindfold him and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. Peter denies Jesus. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed, and the servant girl on seeing him began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment the cock 
crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. Jesus before Pilate. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now the festival, now the, at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realised that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have them release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort and they clothed him in a purple cloak and after twisting some thorns into a crown they put it on his head and they began saluting him hail king of the jews they struck his head with a reed spat upon him and knelt down in homage to him after mocking him they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to be crucified. The Crucifixion of Jesus They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two bandits, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha! You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way the chief priests, along with the scribes, the, the scribes were also mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now, so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. The death of Jesus. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? 
When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he is calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now, when the centurion who stood facing him saw the way in which he died, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. Well, there's a stark difference between the opening of Palm Sunday and its conclusion. We begin with Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Jesus is hailed as king with loud hosannas as he enters the city. People wave palms and strew his way with branches and with their clothing. I wonder, have you ever collected autographs? Or perhaps you've heard that expression, I'll never wash this again. I'll never wash my cheek again. <laughs> because it's been touched by someone famous. Well, imagine that we are on the road into Jerusalem with all those other welcomers of Jesus and we take off our outer garment, our coat or our shirt, and put it on the ground for Jesus to walk on. Are we worried that it's going to get dirty? No. We are honoured that Jesus would walk on our clothing. We might never look upon that garment in the same way ever again. And if we put it back on soon after, we, maybe it would feel different to us, special, because it has been touched by the feet of Jesus. Palm Sunday is full of excitement, but the mood changes very quickly. Our Palm Sunday turns darker as we hear the Passion narrative. If we allow ourselves to enter deeply into these days, from Palm Sunday through Maundy Thursday, Good Friday to the dawn of Easter Sunday, we will find an intimacy with Christ that is confronting and ultimately draws us closer in love to God, the God of compassion. Our Lenten study for this year takes this as its title, God of Compassion. And it invites us to listen to all sorts of stories of suffering and injustice with compassion, with the ear of our heart. The easy way is to just skim over the events of Holy Week and go straight to the bit that we enjoy you know, cracking open a chocolate egg and eating all those things we've been denying ourselves during Lent. And going straight to the resurrection and finding comfort in it. And yet, if we are to really understand, if we're really to know the God of compassion, we need to enter into the suffering of Jesus. So, even as hard as the passion of Jesus is to hear, let alone experience, we're invited to go gently into Holy Week with the expectation of finding the God of compassion, the one who suffers with us and with the poor, the outcast, the dispossessed, the refugee, the aged and unseen. In week five of the Lenten study, we're asked to try an exercise so that we might more fully enter into the suffering of those in our community. So I invite you to try it with me now. Sit quietly and bring to mind someone. 
Maybe it's a friend, a colleague, a stranger, or someone that you have found challenging. For a, mu for a few minutes, let's ponder together our relationship with that person. Just like me, this person wants to be free from suffering and pain. Just like me, this person wishes to be loved and to love freely. Just like me, this person cries and is misunderstood. Like me, this person wants to be kind, wants to be caring. Like me, this person needs understanding and acceptance. This person has dreams, wants to belong. Just like me, this person is a child of God. Jesus' passion and death is not simply an event on the church calendar. Jesus' passion and death shows us the compassion God has for God's children. Jesus is full of compassion when he defends the woman who has come to anoint him at Bethany. Jesus responds to the criticism of others saying, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? You will always have the poor with you and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. Even as Jesus sits around the table with his disciples for the Passover meal, we sense his concern for them. As they become distressed, Jesus is gentle with them and he himself is distressed. The announcement of the betrayer in their midst gives him no pleasure. Jesus does not use this as an opportunity to vilify or accuse. He suffers with his betrayer, Jesus, full of compassion. In Mark's account of the Passion, after Jesus has been arrested, he barely speaks again. He makes a brief reply to the high priest and to Pilate, but for the most part, Jesus is silent. Mark even makes a point of saying in verse 61, but he was silent and did not answer. And again in verse 5 of chapter 15, but Jesus made no further reply. Jesus' lack of reply has many resonances, but one for us today is for those who suffer, as Jesus did. These are the silent ones. They have no voice and no right of reply. These are the ones who, who cannot find work. These are the ones who lose hope while waiting for a permanent residency visa. These are the ones caught in abusive relationships. They are abused or wrongly imprisoned. These are the ones who have given up trying to speak because their cries always fall on deaf ears. Our loving and compassionate Saviour suffers with them and for them. We have a big choice to make here. We can do nothing or we can be a voice for the voiceless. We can look the other way or we can look and listen to the cries of the suffering in our community. When we open our hearts to the suffering of others, well, it is a costly business. It, it hurts us. And it does mean that we, we can't just shut the suffering out anymore. We've seen it. We've heard it. 
the death of Jesus is very confronting. Jesus cry from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Well, this could easily be the cry of a refugee, of an abused woman. It could be the cry of anyone who suffers injustice or wretchedness of any kind. It's important for us to understand the nature of Jesus' suffering. The cry of ab abandonment from the cross expresses a human cry of abandonment. It is recorded by Mark so that we might become more keenly aware that whatever darkness may envelop us, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Jesus' death is only the beginning. Our journey to the resurrection has just begun. We must walk the steps of betrayal, injustice, mocking and pain before we can experience the fullness of Easter joy. Let us pray. Compassionate, loving Lord Jesus, you know what it is to be betrayed, abused and rejected. We grieve that as a society we are choosing to let people fall into poverty and disadvantage. Give us grace to recognise the needs and struggles of others and give us courage to counter the structural injustices we see around us. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Let us pray for Christian communities everywhere following the way of the cross this week, that the passion of Christ may sustain our faith and enliven our witness to the world. Let us pray to the living God, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for pastors, teachers, evangelists and prophets of the church, that the wisdom of Christ may keep them grounded in the gospel. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are preparing for baptism and for the church preparing to welcome them, that the faith of Christ may gather us together at the foot of the cross. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and for the peace of Jerusalem, that the kingdom of Christ may come with true peace and the forgiveness of our enemies. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the endangered earth where human carelessness and waste threaten the environment, that the Spirit of Christ may teach us how to care for the earth and revive our delight in creation. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the hungry, the homeless, and the outcasts of the world. That the love of Christ may teach us hospitality, hope, and care for the least of our sisters and brothers. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people whose lives are limited by sickness, grief or fear, that the compassion of Christ may come to them with courage and comfort. 
Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bear the weight of others' troubles, that the easy yoke of Christ may lighten their burdens and strengthen them for service. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people offering their lives in loving service, that the blessing of Christ may come to them and their gifts may be received and remembered with joy. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who deny their faith or betray their friends, that the forgiveness of Christ may come to them with healing and love. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for people preparing to die. That the light of Christ might shine on them both now and in the day of resurrection. Let us pray to the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, may the mystery of the death of your Son which we celebrate this Palm Sunday, strengthen our faith and be a sure ground for hope. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Notices for this week. Lenten studies continue across the parish. Unfortunately, due to illness, the Bass group has had to go into recess, but will recommence after Easter. All other groups continue this week and you are always welcome to join in. If you would like a palm cross to remember this season, they are available from the little table at the rectory in Cowes and from each of our churches during this week. Services for Holy Week and Easter is, are as follows. April the 1st, Maundy Thursday a foot washing service with Holy Communion at St. Augustine San Remo at 7 p.m. Good Friday, the 2nd of April. Services will include reserved sacrament at St. Philip's Cows at 9 a.m., at St. Augustine's San Remo at 10.30 a.m., and at St. Paul's Bass also at 10.30 a.m. On Holy Saturday, the 3rd of April, there will be an Easter Vigil with the lighting of the new fire and Holy Communion at St. Philip's Cows at 8.30 p.m. Now, a reminder to everyone that Daylight Saving ends this Saturday, the 3rd of April. That's Holy Saturday. So you need to put your clocks back one hour before you go to bed in readiness for Easter morning. If you're planning to attend any of our services on Easter Sunday, please book in as we do have limited seating due to the density quotients imposed by COVID-19 regulations. You will, to, you will ring Michaela 
and her phone number is on our website. On Easter Sunday, the 4th of April, Holy Communion will be in all congregations. 10 a.m. at St. Augustine's in San Remo. 10 a.m. at the Parish Hall in Cowes and 12.30 p.m. at St. Paul's in Bass. The Interchurch Council of Phillip Island will also hold a dawn service at the Amphitheatre in Erewhon Point at 6.15 a.m. Well, the school holidays are nearly upon us. And my guess is that you might be welcoming guests or planning a holiday with family or friends. May the God of compassion bless you this holy week. Amen.